dry, hot and desolate. The desert is one of the most inhospitable places on Earth. The Sahara stretches for 9 million square kilometers, covering much of North Africa. Varying from seas of dunes to sculpted sandstone plateaus, it can be a vast and merciless environment. And yet, if you know where to look, there are signs of life. The Sahara is the largest hot desert in the world, with temperatures easily soaring to 50 degrees. Finding water sources, often in unlikely places, is the only reason humans and animals have survived here for centuries. In the desert, water means life. Terjit Oasis is one of Mauritania's desert wonders, neatly nestled between the desert dunes and the rocky plateaus of the Adrar region. For thousands of years, water has filtered through the steep cliffs, emerging at the sandy base of the palm-lined gorge. Jamal is a descendant of the early nomads who made Turjit their home in the 14th century. <laughs> Jamal's forefathers planted the first date palms here. Today, the abundant plantation gives the oasis its iconic look, and the water continues to keep the plants alive through Jamal's simple but effective irrigation system. The nomadic and nearby sedentary communities in the Adra region have come to depend on Terjit Oasis. A reliable source of water is a rare thing in the Sahara, and people and animals make the most of it when they can. Here in northeastern Chad, these camels are returning from a week in the sands, and there is only one thing on their minds. Camels are extremely well adapted to life in the desert. They can go over a week without water, and for months without food. Their eyes, noses, and feet are tailored for desert conditions. And of course, there's that famous fat store. The shade and water at Gelta Darche allows the camels to bath and refresh. And provides a unique location for learning to swim. But such places are few and far between. Just 300 kilometers south from here is a desert community which isn't so fortunate. 65-year-old Amna Bashar Ahmed is among the first residents of Ure Kasoni, a refugee camp in the desert. Her journey into the desolate Sahel is marked with scars both emotional and physical. Mm -hmm. 
خس ولد مثل ولد ده نلبسه خلقة نبينا هم دي جاي اللي بضربه بس جري بنا بتيلل بس نهار كل ما نقدر نقول ترى لكن نما نجينا هنا وس جاي كل ولا نعرفه أول إلا أسمه بس إلينا مش هذا بجينا Despite the frequent sandstorms and the oppressive heat, the camp's population has swelled to over 27,500 people, all of whom fled violence and conflict in neighboring Darfur, Sudan, just seven kilometers from the camp. The risk of insecurity overlooked in favor of proximity to a sustainable water source. In the early days, clean, drinkable water was difficult to come by, but that has since changed. Here in Chad, survival comes down to ingenuity. This water source is completely man-made, an artificial lake that supports the lives of over 30,000 people in the desert. Kariaki Lake is the source of life for Uri Kasoni refugee camp and the small rural community that surrounds it. NGOs assisted by refugees take part in a daily struggle to provide camp inhabitants with enough water, roughly 15 litres per person per day, five litres a day less than the UN recommended amount. For Amne and the rest of her fellow refugees, the water in the camp has allowed them to eke out a simple yet sustainable existence away from the horrors of the past. <laughs> Amne has taken to educating the children she cares for about preserving water. Across the Sahara, from the natural oasis in Mauritania to the camels of the canyons and the refugees of Uri Kasoni in Chad, water is the single most precious resource in the desert. For all forms of life, survival in the Sahara hinges on the ability to adapt, improvise and overcome. As desertification and unpredictable rainfall threaten desert water sources, these skills may face their toughest test yet. <laughs> 